What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and I appreciate you being here. Today I bring you another Destiny 2 video and today we have massive patch notes from the 2.0 updates you should be installing right now or installed earlier on today in prep for the Forsaken on September 4th. Now there's many many changes to all different things in the game but before we get into that guys if you do enjoy the video at the end leaving a like really does help me out. Also if you're new around here be sure to subscribe for daily Destiny 2 videos and stay tuned until the end of the video guys to find out about my monthly controller giveaway. But let's get into the update patch and notes and we're going to start with weapons and armors and start with exotic armor with the Hunter. The Orpheus rigs no longer grant super energy on bloom and damage sharing. Raised base super amount that you receive from tethers to create a more consistent and less exponential experience. Super energy given is scaled up when more powerful enemies are tethered. When used with Mobius Quiver, grants additional tether shots, does not grant ability energy on tethering targets. Also crazy changes, I, to be honest I haven't really used the Orpheus Rigs, I mean I used them about a month ago to create orbs when fighting Callus, but, but to be honest they weren't a must so yeah, nothing too bad though in my opinion anyway. Moving on to the Celestial Nighthawk, now grants 33% of your super energy back if the target is killed by the shot, we knew about that change already pretty cool. The Worm Husk Crown no longer starts regeneration of health and shields, instead grants a larger health and shield bump at the beginning of a dodge instead of at the end. This to me is a buff, definitely not a nerf, it's a buff in prep for the way Forsaken will drop PvP wise. Nothing more, nothing less. I made a video about this about 3 or 4 days back. If you want to see, watch it, check it out, it's on my channel. Knucklehead Radar, enhanced radar resolution while crouching. Our great more hunters crouching walking around the map. Lucky Pants, extended duration of illegally modded holster. Okay, Shinobi's Vow. Skip grenades return some energy when it damages an enemy. Great, moving on to the Warlock, the Stag. Rift Drop from Death now has standard Rift Duration. Eye of Another World, Ability Recharge Bonus increased. Nazarak Sin, Increased Duration of Abyssal Extractors. Rapid Kills extend the duration up to 20 seconds, damn! School of Dire Ahamkara, Increased Super Energy Gain from Nova Bomb Kills. Killing higher ranked enemies now rewards more super energy. Transversive Steps, Enhanced Mobility. After sprinting for a short time, your currently equipped weapon is automatically reloaded. Winter's Guile, Tune Damage and Duration per Stack to be more consistent. Okay, moving on to the Titan, Mark 44 Standard Size. Overshield granted by sprinting appears faster. Hello Fire Heart, Base cooldown reduction when super is uncharged in addition to CDR when charged. Helm of Saint 14, grants allies an overshield for a short duration when passing through Ward of Dawn. Mask of the Quiet One, increased energy gain from incoming damage. While critically wounded, health is granted from kills. Nice. A helmet I never see people use, but after that, it may be one you see more often. Crest of Alpha Loopy, healing pulse is more effective. Peacekeepers, increased movement speed when wielding an SMG. Okay then, Worm God's Caress, tune damage and duration per stack to be more consistent. Nice, okay so we're going to move on to weapons and developer insight. We've, and the patch note state, we've forsaken, we've made a major change to the systems, the freedom to slot powerful weapons in either the kinetic slot or energy slot. This fundamental change necessitated a fresh look at player's damage output in both PvE and PvP. Power ammo weapons and special ammo weapons may exist in either the kinetic or energy slot. Heavy ammo weapons can exist only in a power weapon slot. Ammo type and damage type are now fixed attributes of a specific weapon. Ammo distribution models updated entirely to support weapon slot changes. Energy weapons no longer deal bonus damage to active enemy supers. Okay then. Ammo economy, primary ammo weapons. Hand cannons, scout rifles, auto rifles, sidearms and submachine guns. Special ammo weapons, fusion rifles, shotguns, sniper rifles, trash rifles, single shot grenade launchers and heavy ammo weapons, drum loaded grenade launchers, rocket launchers, linear fusion rifles and swords. The following year 1 weapons have moved to the kinetic slot. The Balligan, the Shepherd's Watch, the Hawthorns, Field Foot Shotgun, the Lonsay Guard, Perfect Paradox, the Frigid Jackal and the Silicon Neroma. The following year 1 weapons are now locked to solar damage, the Icarus SR which is the sniper rifle and the Icarus SG which is the shotgun. The following exotics did not change slot and still use heavy ammo. Tractor Cannon, the Legend of Accurus, the Darcy and the Whisper of the Worm. They then go on to state, developer insight, the tuning of destiny weapons and abilities is inexorably tied to the systems that we build upon. 
Ultimately, our goal is to still provide gameplay challenge despite a global increase in player damage output due to the new systems introduced. To properly support the high uptime of shotgun, sniper rifles and fusion rifles, the following changes were made to all weapons in the game. Primary ammo weapons. Increased precision damage output of primary ammo weapons. Increased in air accuracy. Decreased body shot damage in PvE. Decreased auto rifle damage required to stagger enemies to compensate for reduced body damage. Special ammo weapons. Reduced damage output of special ammo weapons. Increased damage of trace rifles. Trace rifles now disintegrate defeated enemies. Heavy ammo weapons. Grenade launchers. Increased damage and blast radius. Linear fusion rifle. Increased damage, reduced time to charge and fire, reduced aim assist. Swords, increased ammo, increased damage mitigation when guarding. Exotics, the sleeper simulant, fixed an issue where the charge time was not displayed properly on weapon. Magazine size increased, reduced base damage. Wow! Borealis, bonus damage after breaking a shield, increased on precision hit. Still grant bonus damage on body shots. Prometheus lens, no longer generates special ammo on kill. Tractor Cannon, Repulsive Forces Weaken Effect now also increases non-void damage by 33% but no longer stacked with other weaken effects, Shadow Shot, Hammer Strike etc etc. Perks, Explosive Payload, Reduced Bonus Damage Output, Ambitious Assassin, Increased Time Allotted Between Kills to Earn Bonus Ammunition, Backup Plan, Decreased Amount of Time Weapon Must Be Stored for Perk to Become Available, Box Breathing, Reduced Time Required for Perk to Activate, Reduced Precision Damage, Perk Now Resets After Firing, This means you will have to aim down sights again with any weapon that does have box breathing on, i.e. the Darcy, the Whisper of the Worm and I believe the Icarus Sniper Rifle as well but I ain't certain of that. High Impact Rounds, Bonus Damage Granted earlier in magazine. Grave Rubber, now reload your entire magazine. Primary ammo is granted directly to the magazine. Heavy and special ammo is transferred from reserves to magazine. Fueled prep, increase inventory reserves, increase stow, ready and reload speed when crouched. Auto loading holster, reduce the time required for perk to activate when weapon is stowed. Opening shot, increase fall off range when weapon does more damage at longer ranges. Triple tap, grants ammo directly to the magazine, no longer pulls from reserves. Nice, that's actually a great great change. Mod, starting with 2.0.0.1 on September 4th, year 1 mods can no longer be inserted into gear or weapons. You will no longer be able to insert any mods into year 1 gear or change elemental damage type come next week. MISC, fixed an issue where rocket launcher stability stat was not working as intended. Fixed an issue where the impact casing perk on grenade launchers did not function. Swords now have the ability to accept shaders. Nice. Moving on to abilities and general. Visual layout of perks changed in subclass paths. Increased base guarding melee damage. It now takes two melee hits to defeat an enemy guard in PvP. Increase the base damage of seismic strike, hammer strike, and shield bash. Adjusted active super bonus damage resistance values. Added a timer to the status effect for healing rift, empowering rift, and rally barricade to communicate the time remaining before they expire. Grenades, axiom bow, increased base damage, increased the amount of time it takes for the tracking strength to lower flashbang increased base damage incendiary grenade increased base damage storm grenade increased base damage scatter grenade reach range and fall off ranges for the detonations for more reliable damage magnetic fusion and flux grenade increased base damage damage is now the same whether a target has been stuck or simply walked over the grenade when detonating magnetic grenade now detonates a second time only if attached to a target the second detonation no longer only occurs on the grenade itself and will now be applied to each individual target hit by the initial detonation. Skip grenade. Increased impact damage of each skip drone impact for higher total damage output. Increased impact damage of each skip drone impact for a higher total potential damage. Void wall. Increased the base damage of initial void wall wave. Hunter. General. Marksman dodge is now considered a reload. It can interact with kill clip racking etc. Gunslinger, practice makes perfect perk now grants super energy on throw and knife kills. Increase the duration of all versions of Golden Gun, I believe this is by 2 seconds. Night Stalker, once activated, the Shadow Shot Tether will find enemy targets more reliable within its search radius. The Titan, General, Rally Barricade no longer requires players to take cover and reload. It now feeds ammo to your magazine over time. Striker, we have terminal velocity enabled. The opening fist of Havoc Slam no longer leaves a lingering damage area. Load the health threshold for triggering knockout so that it triggers sooner to keep up with the PvP lethality changes. Increase the lunge range of the Fist of Havoc melee attack. 
Some Burka, Sol Invictus will now trigger on burn kills. Sentinel, increased Wall of Dawn health significantly. Increased the amount of health provided by the Wall of Dawn over shield. Sentinel Shield Super, increased shield throw projectile speed. Shield throw no longer loses damage after bouncing or ricocheting off targets. Faster attack animations for grounded melee attacks. Increased Sentinel Super damage in PvE. Moving on to the Warlock. General, increased healing rift effectiveness. Empowering rift now increases precision damage. Previously, damage bonus was cut at the weapons precision damage in PvP. Stormcrawler increased the PvP damage of Storm Trance. Increased Arc Swords projectile speed. Dawnblade increased Dawnblade projectile speed and base tracking strength. Avoid Walker significantly reduced the length of time that Blink disables your radar and HUD. Chaos Accelerant no longer costs super energy to use. Increased damage bonus granted by Chaos Accelerant for each Voidwalker grenade. Crazy changes there people, so so many, it's unbelievable. PVE Daily Heroic Story Playlist Yeah, when milestones have been retired and replaced with a Heroic Story Playlist. These will share modifiers with Heroic Adventures and Strikes. Forsaken Campaign Missions will be featured at 500 power, while Year 1 Campaign Missions will be featured at 200 power. Destinations Wanted escapees from the Prison of Elders will now roam the open world. They will not drop rewards until September 4th, 2018. Increase the difficulty of Lost Sectors. Example, EDZ Lost Sectors are now 240 power. Adventures. Replayable adventures have now been removed from destination vendors. Heroic adventures have been added to all destinations. Destinations without heroic adventures before Forsaken will have them available during their Flashpoint weeks. A random heroic adventure will be available each day. Mercury and Mars heroic adventures are unchanged. Heroic adventures will share similar mods with with daily heroics and strikes. Moving on to strikes, Vanguard strikes, heroic strike playlists have been retired for all players and replaced with a single content appropriate playlist. Legacy, strike playlist matches the legacy playlist that is currently available in year 1. Recommended powers 200, will have modifiers. Forsaken, strike playlist has 3 difficulties to select from. Recommended power 300, not available when your level is 40 power higher. Recommended power 400, not available when your level is 40 power higher. Recommended power 500, always available, will have modifiers. Nightfall, retired prestige difficulty, increased base difficulty for nightfall activities. Players can choose one of three nightfall strikes each week. Players may select only the strikes for which they own the appropriate expansions. Legacy players will still be able to enable modifiers via the challenge card, but scoring will be disabled in the 270 power nightfall. General, escapees from the prison of elders now appear in strikes, lost sectors and public areas. Moving on to the Crucible and general changes, new ammo model for maps to accommodate weapon slots. Moving on to items and economy, general collections, emblems and exotics that are found in the vault will be unavailable during the week of August 28th to September 4th, but they will return with 2.0.0.1 in the upcoming collections tab. Exotics will now always drop at or above your guardian's power level. Year 1 challenges will no longer grant destination materials or tokens. Destination materials can be earned via bounty available from their respective destination vendors. Anything that previously granted destination tokens or rare materials will grant common destination materials moving forward. Destination tokens and rare destination materials are no longer granted, but they can still be redeemed for reputation if you have them in your inventory. Moving on to Zer, his will is not his own, no longer displays a vendor icon on destination maps, no longer tied to flashpoints. He has a clear purpose but cannot explain it, forgive him. Fated engrams grant only pre-forsaken exotics. Tower, increased vault size to 500 slots. Players can now dismantle shaders in stacks of 5 in Master Rules vendor screen. Cade 6, Cade 6 has left the tower to investigate disturbances in the reef, remove treasure map and scout reports. Damn goodbye Kate. And lastly people, technical. Localization. Added Korean language support to consoles. User interface. Updated title screen to reflect Forsaken launch. Director. The director screen has been updated to reconfigure the way challenges, milestones, flashpoints and quests are presented. Challenges. The year one challenge system has been removed and converted into bounties which will be available through their respective destination and activity vendors on September 4th. Bounties are displayed in the pursuits bucket of the inventory screen. In year two Forsaken challenges will now refer to the bonuses that grant rewards on a daily or weekly basis. 
These can be seen in the director via new indicators on a playlist or destination when available. Milestones. The milestones tray will now be limited to showing specific quests or quest steps, one-time completion objectives such as campaign missions, subclass missions and strikes introductions will remain as milestones. Players who do not have any active milestones will not see a milestones blade being displayed. Many year one milestones have been converted into challenges. These challenges will continue to grant powerful rewards, weekly and daily milestones. Previously, weekly and daily milestones such as Strike Completion and Crucible will now appear as weekly or daily challenges on their associated playlists. Flashpoints. The Flashpoint milestones will now appear as a challenge visible on the respective destination vendor. Flashpoint progress has been expanded into include Lost Sector and Heroic Adventures. Exotic Quests. Exotic Quests are now displayed in the Inventory tab under Pursuit's Bucket. They can be recovered at the quest associated vendor if abandoned. Exotic Quests now correctly use Exotic colouring in the UI. Icons for exotic quests are now appropriately represented with exotic rarity. World quests. World quests are now displayed in the inventory tab under the pursuits bucket. Updated the director with a new theme and layout to better represent destinations for year 2. Pre-sale is in the reef location, the leviathan raid and raid layers have been moved to Nessus. Character screen and weapon slots. Weapon tooltips now display ammo types. White ammo icon primary, green ammo icon special and purple ammo icon is heavy. The HUD will show a colour based on the associated ammo type next to each weapon on the weapon tray. Subclass screen, the path name is now being displayed along the bottom of the character art. Collections, collections are not available until September 4th, triumphs are not available until September 4th. Gear tooltips, perks are displayed by name only on tooltips for gold shells, weapons and armour. Exotic perks will display a short description. And guys, that is it. We have come to the end of the patch notes. Now, if you want to read through them all, uh, you can via the link within the video description, guys. But damn, so, so much. It's unbelievable. But yeah, guys, those are the patch notes for the update you should be installing or installed earlier today or yesterday, depending on when you're watching this. But yeah, guys, we have come to the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, really does help me out. Uh, if you're new around here and enjoy daily Destiny videos, be sure to subscribe and remember people, every month I give away a fully customizable controller. To be with a chance of winning it, simply drop a like on the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and drop a comment down below. The controller will be for Xbox or PlayStation sent anywhere in the world. Simply click the Gleam link at the top of the video description. It's fast, simple and legit, guys. But on that note, I am out. Thanks as always for stopping by and hopefully I will see you on that next one. Always in the